Hey everybody. So uh, the other day I did a video talking about the um, the open gaming license, the uh, OGL 1.1. A lot of people did videos about it because it was so bad. You know, it's just uh, horrible what uh, the the terms of this you know this contract that they were sending out. And um, a lot has happened since then. <laughs> um, the D&D uh, &D tabletop community kind of rallied, uh, went to war, <laughs> and uh, there is some serious backlash against uh, wizards. And um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that happened. So first off, um, uh, there apparently there, you know, there has been from the beginning, like weeks ago, when this uh, original contract was in the works, there have been um, uh, Wizards employees, uh, Wizards of the Coast employees that um, have been leaking stuff, right? And um, so one um, Wizards employee sent out an email to uh, d, d Shorts, a, a YouTuber, and uh, he said, um, they're briefly delaying the rollout of the OGL changes due to the backlash. Um, their decision is based purely on um, the impact on the bottom line. And specifically, they're looking at D&D &D Beyond subscriptions and cancellations because it's the quickest financial data that they have. It's like, you know, up to the minute. And um, they're still hoping that the community forgets, moves on, and can still push through. And basically, they have never talked about the fans in a positive light, you know, in any of these meetings. Um, they basically see us as an obstacle to getting more money. Like, um, the, <laughs> I mean, that kind of sums it up, you know. Uh, we're just like blocking them from, uh, from making more money. So uh, people mobilized. They, everybody went over, you know, they all, everybody went to the, um, uh, the D&D &D Beyond, uh, website and everybody canceled their subscriptions. And it's, you know, it's a trending thing. Um, the hashtags like open D&D &D and stop the sub. Um, and, uh, also, so I mentioned in the last video that I did, that um, uh, Kobo Press was making, was working on their own actual, you know, open gaming license, right? Um, because, like, if you're any kind of a publisher, um, it doesn't matter how, how big of a publisher you are. Having the rug yanked out from under you like that, you know, after having this open gaming license up for 20 plus years now, it's like 22 years now, that people have been building their own systems, you know, and, and posting like fan content and just like, like you name it, right? Like I talked about it a lot. I talked about all the problems with the, um, the 1.1 uh, OGL update, right? Um, so first, Cobalt Press announced that they were going to do their own open gaming license. They called it Project Black Flag, right? And then Paizo also. So these these would be um, the two like biggest publishers who would be affected, you know, by the um, by the open gaming license. But um, uh, Cobalt is smaller. They're they're nowhere like, you know, D and D um, Wizards, huge big eight hundred pound gorilla. Um, the Cobalt Press, you know, <laughs> smaller, much, much smaller publisher. But Paizo, the people who make Pathfinder, um, they're a much bigger company. You know, like they have a much bigger portion of the market share than um, like Cobalt Press or any of these other. It's like if you if you go out there and you look at the amount of games that are being played, like on Dean... Uh, uh, Roll20 and stuff like that, you know, and, like, the sales and stuff. Um, D&D has, like, about half of the market share 
of games out there. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I'm no, don't quote me on that, but it's like half of the people out there that are playing role-playing games are playing D and D. And then the other half is split between everybody else. But like a quarter of that is Pathfinder. So, you know, they're nowhere, they're not as big and they don't, you know, they don't make the same kind of money and everything, but they're, they're pretty big. Um, so Paizo comes out with a statement of their own. Um, uh, so, you know, for the last several weeks, um, rumors of Wizards of the Coast and Eurobit version of their open gaming license began circulating among publishers and on social media. Um, and so here's, here's the thing. Here's the, uh, here's the, here's the, the kicker, right? So, um, the, a lot of these employees, like the people at Paizo and the people, you know, people at Wizards of the Coast, um, they've worked for different companies before. Like for instance, um, the, the Paizo owner, Lisa Stevens and, and Paizo president, Jim Butler, were working at Wizards. They, they worked on the OGL at the time that it was signed 20 years ago. Um, and, um, uh, one of the, uh, the, the, um, the lawyers, you know, from the, the, the law firm that Paizo uses wrote, he was one of the attorneys who came up with the, the actual document itself. And Paizo is like, we're going to fight this, you know, we're going to go to bat for everybody. Um, we, you know, we're going to, um, we're going to go to court. You know, we're going to, we're going to make a true 100%, you know, uh, um, open gaming license that is irrevocable. It doesn't matter what happens in perpetuity, you know, for all, um, all, uh, practical purposes, right? This cannot be dissolved. It's like a, a an open source license to, uh, open source framework to, to publish games and, and content and um, have your intellectual property protected, right? Um, so this, their, their creative license, open creative license is called uh, Open RPG Creative License or ORC for short, right? And, um, you know, they, they, they mentioned that uh, in addition to Paizo, um, uh, Cobalt Press, Chaosium, Green Ronin, Legendary Games, Rogue Genius Games, like all of these people who would be affected by this, um, you know, this, these changes to this license, um, they're all banding together and they're all going to fight this. Um, and um, they have a strong legal case, you know, like there's a, there's, talk of a class action lawsuit. Um, there's, you know, like they, they have a very strong legal case. And then the actual, the, the 1.1 OGL was just full of holes, like legally, you know, um, wizards didn't really have much of a leg to stand on to enforce the changes that they were making to the OGL. Um, and, so everybody um, going over to D and D Beyond in mass and canceling their subscriptions, um, it crashed the website. Uh, the, the so many people were trying to go to D and D Beyond to um, cancel their subscriptions that um, it just it, it crashed D and D Beyond and um, uh, D and D Beyond. Three out, yeah, three hours ago at eight eight o'clock this morning, um, released a statement and did some serious backpedaling, uh, basically taking back everything that people were so pissed off about. Um, but it, this whole statement is just full of lies and gaslighting, uh, and I kind of wanted to break it down. Um, so they say, you know, when we initially conceived of revising the OGL, keep this, keep, it was, there were three major goals 
First, we wanted the ability to prevent the use of D&D from being included in hateful and discriminatory products. Bullshit. Bullshit. Um, where are these hateful and discriminatory products that they're speaking of? If that was such a huge concern, you know, in the front of their minds, like, is there all this content out there? Like, I don't just, you can, you can imagine, like, it doesn't exist, you know? Um, and then second, we wanted to address those attempting to use D&D in Web3 blockchain gains and NFTs by making clear that the OGL content is limited to tabletop role-playing game content like campaigns, modules, and supplements. Lies. Um, you know, like, again, like, where are these, these games, these blockchains, these, you know, NFT, uh, the, the, like, how come, how come we, how come nobody knows that this stuff actually exists? Um, and then third, we wanted to ensure that the OGL is for the content creator, the home brewer, the aspiring designer. Like, this is just, this is all like covering their tracks, gaslighting, and, um, you know, at, at no point do they admit that they made a mistake or say that they're sorry. Um, like, they just cover up all of their tracks with a bunch of lies and, and gaslight people. Um, like, they say, okay, this is why our early drafts of the OGL included the provisions that they did. That draft language was provided. So if it was a draft, then why did they send out contracts to be to be signed? Like why the, the contracts were leaked when they were being sent out to be signed to these, you know, people like Kickstarter and, um, you know, like the, these, these other publishers and stuff. If it was just a draft, then, then why did they want people to sign a legally binding document? Um, and then uh, in addition to the language to you uh, to address discriminatory and hateful conduct and clarifying that the types of products the OGL covers our drafts include royalty language designed to apply to large corporations so this is where they actually admit you know like the 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 big big part right was that they were going after Paizo they were going after Cobalt Press they were going after big companies you know that have like a million dollars or more of income from D and D content that they're not seeing a penny of, right? Uh, and uh, including like Kickstarters and uh, just any kind of uh, publisher like Green Ronin and um, you know any of these people that are making uh, like home like books and like you get you get the idea, right? But there's also a lot of video games like the. Um, uh, who's the, like, Celasta, Crown of the Magister, um, is, is a, like, Baldur's Gate is the, like, triple A title, um, Baldur's Gate 3 is, like, the triple A D&D title, that's a D&D official title, and then, um, and it's, you know, it's very much, like, 5e, and, um, uh, Celasta, Crown of the Magister is probably a more faithful 5e video game adaptation um and, and i think that there is some there's some stuff in there's something in Celestia crown of the magister that uh utilizes the ogl or it's like it's in the the legal framework right um so you know having said that like we i talked about this before you can't copyright rules rules are not intellectual property and there's a lot of games out there that are D and D like, you know, in like how they, how they play. Um, I you know I talked about how I I I hit up um, Kevin Crawford over at um, uh, Cine Nomine, and you know I asked him about it because he's like really really good about getting back to people and and he'll he'll you know talk with you let it, let you like pick his brain and ask him about um, like publishing stuff and um and you know he said like you could make a one-to-one -one copy of my game like you could like you if you wanted to go out and make a monopoly game right now you could do that you would just have to change everything you know change all the names and everything and you can't you can't have like boardwalk and park place and you know all that you would just have to change the names of everything 
and you can make your own Monopoly game. Um, or, you know, like whatever, like D&D or like that's part of, I think that's part of what the plan is with this new open gaming license is that um, they're going to make like a 5e clone um, that uh, anybody can publish content under, right? So, um, you know, like there's a, there's just a lot of like backpedaling and um, just gaslighting in every part, every, every, um, everything that they, they, they say, here, you know, like they talk about how their main goal was to prevent hate, hate content. Sure. Yeah. Um, that's why, you know, it was like, and that's another thing is that the way that it was worded, it was completely arbitrary what they decided was hate content. So say that you didn't like the, I don't know, like the, the, um, D one D and D, like you didn't like that, um, orcs had a, a negative to their intelligence, you know, or something like that. And they could say, oh, well, you're, you're being racist to, uh, to orcs and we're going to come after you with our lawyers and take your content. And <clears throat> they, they tried to explain that too. Um, so here's the, here's the part where they say, um, the, the, about, um, like virtual tabletop uses and like YouTube, YouTube content or like, you know, cosplayers and all that stuff. Right. So the next OGL will contain the provisions that allow us to protect and cultivate the inclusive environment we are trying to build and specify that it covers only content for tabletop RPGs. That means that other expressions such as educational and charitable campaigns, live streams, cosplays, virtual tabletop uses, etc., will remain unaffected by the OGL update. And content already released under the 1.0 um, uh, contract will also remain unaffected. So they're not revoking the, um, the original OGL contract and then saying that this is invalid now. If you're making any money from this content that you've previously published, you owe us money going forward. Um, so that's that's a that's a that's a big thing. Like they're backpedaling on that. We're saying they're they're saying if you've already made content, you know, years and years ago, like in the last twenty two years, and you're still making any money from it, we're not going to come after you for that now, uh, going forward, All right? And like. <laughs> They're, 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 um, the, you know, they got caught, they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar and, uh, and then they're, they're just lying, lying about it to cover their tracks again and again and again. Um, so what it will not contain is any royalty structure. So that's huge. That's important. That's, you know, something that everybody was pretty ticked off about. Um, like, because 25% of your profits, um, that like <laughs> that is the profit you know it's like if you have one of these these big companies um you know your margins are not that big where you can just take a quarter of your profits and then say okay you know that's that's yours now um you, they have all kinds of costs like overhead and you know publishing like like you name it um 25% is that's a huge chunk of your profits um <clears throat> so it will not contain any royalty structure. <clears throat> it will also not include the license back provision. So the license back provision is where they said, um, if you publish something, you know, under the D&D umbrella using the Forgotten Realms, you know, or like um, one of our settings, you know, like Dragonlance or whatever, um, they they had like sort of a backdoor clause where they said we we if you publish something and then you use our setting then we we maintain that we can take your content and publish it without your permission you know like you're giving us a license to use your content however we like um and and so just getting rid of uh people's copyrights like critical role you know where they they have uh uh, their likenesses and their content, like Wildermount, their setting and, you know, characters and 
all that stuff, like, you know, they're just saying, we have the license to all of that because you published previously, like you published Wilder Mount. So it exists in the D&D universe. So now your likenesses, you know, your characters, all that stuff belongs. We can publish it without your, without your permission. Um, and so, you know, that, like, that's one of those things where it's, like, totally legally unenforceable. They do not have a leg to stand on legally to do that. And, and if there was a class action lawsuit, you know, that's, that would probably be one of the, the big things. Um, and, uh, say, you know, any language that we put down will be crystal clear and unequivocal on that point. The license back language was intended to protect us and our partners from from creators who incorrectly allege that we steal their work simply because of coincidental similarities. No, 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 no. The license back language was intended to protect us and our partners from creators who incorrectly allege that we steal their work. I just, I'm, that, that whole sentence just stinks to high hell. It's like, you don't need to put a provision in your contract saying that all of your stuff belongs to us to protect yourself from, yeah, okay. I'll let you make of what, what you want of that. Um, so as we continue to invest in the game that we love and move forward with partnerships in film, television, and digital games, that, that risk is simply too great to ignore. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, because, you know, like we have the army of lawyers that's going to come after them because, you know, like they're making content that that looks similar to something that we've made. Um, the new LGL will continue can contain provisions that address the uh, continue to address contain provisions to address that risk. But we will not do it without a license back and without but we will do it without a license back and without suggesting we have rights to the content that you create. So they're admitting that it was in there. They're admitting that that, you know, we, um, there was wording in there that suggested that they own <coughs> your content or have rights to publish it without your permission. Um, your ideas and imagination are what makes this game special and that belongs to you. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, a couple of last thoughts, sir. Firstly, we don't, we won't be able to release the OGL today, um, and so there's just like tons and tons of backpedaling, and they basically back down on every front, like every part of this uh, this new contract, and it's like you know you're on record, like you you had a board meeting, you had a a meeting with the shareholders. And then you said D and D is under monetized. We're working on ways to make it more profitable. Um, you know, they they said that um, like DMs are the the number like they're the whales, like they're the they're where the majority of the the profits come from because the players, you know, they buy like maybe buy a player's handbook and then um, you know some dice, some minis, like stuff like that. And the GMs are the ones that are buying all the books, like they're buying the, you know, all the rule books and the setting books and like all that stuff. So they need to find a way to make more money. You know, they need to find a way through like microtransactions, like uh, making their own virtual tabletop. Um, and the, like, that's kind of another scummy thing that they did that I forgot about was that they basically made a a like one-to-one -one clone of um, Tailspire, which is a, um, I'll just pull that up real quick. What is Tailspire? Um, so uh, Tailspire is a, it's a virtual tabletop, um, but it basically, you know, it makes your, um, your, well, I mean, not just D&D, &D, but like they have like cyberpunk and, you know, like they're working on all kinds of like tile sets so that you can make your tabletop game look like a, um, uh, like a triple A video game, basically. 
Um, and then they want to, they want to sell like special skins. They want to spell, you know, it's like, oh, you want to give your orc purple skin? Sure. That's going to cost $3, you know, because that's what this, um, that's what this new CEO does. Like they're on record, like all this stuff, like we have the receipts. We know that you're lying to us. Like we know that you're backpedaling. We know that you're blowing smoke up our ass, um, and gaslighting us. Uh, but like, so instead of doing, you know, what would maybe be like the smart thing to do, um, with, you know, like you've, you've already got this game, right? You already bought D and D beyond. Why not just buy Tailspire? Why not just, just, you know, buy it from the developers and then have them work on it, you know, or, or work on some kind of partnership. No, instead they, they, they ripped it off. You know, they made their own clone of it and then um, slapped their name on it. And then they went after, you know, they're like, um, oh, Roll20? Um, yeah, you guys, like your, the open gaming license, you know, like you, you're using our content. You need to pay us a chunk. And then we're going to make our own virtual tabletop and it's going to look like a video game and we're going to have microtransactions. And, um, and then, you know, we're going after Pathfinder and we're going after Paizo and then they try to gaslight everybody. So that's basically what they did. Um, so I just, you know, I wanted to do a little video about it. I think it's sleazy. I think it's scummy. Um, I think that, uh, what Paizo doing, it's like, I'm, <laughs> I think it's awesome. You know, like, so... They want to make a, a real open gaming license, like an open source, um, real open gaming license that um, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's set in stone that it is irrevocable, open, royalty free, copyright free, and anybody if for perpetuity can publish, you know, games, make games and, and publish content under this license. And, you know, they're, they're using the lawyers that um, originally set up the legal framework for this document in the first place. Um, and it's like they're, you know, banding together with all of the publishers, anybody that would be affected by this. And then they're, you know, like sending out this, uh, this license to people, anybody who um, like creates games and stuff. Awesome. Like, I love it. <laughs> And I love that they like rally the troops, you know, and they're like, like call the, call the charge, like, dirk, dirk, dirk. and, 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 you know, like, well, I mean, not just them, but like everybody is saying, uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to rally the troops and we're going to fight this thing. And, and everybody is like, is, is invited to come and join us and like, you know, use our license. And like, I just think it's awesome. I love it. So anyways, that's the update. That's like the silver lining on the cloud um and uh and and i would say that there's good things that have come from this a lot of good things but anyways yeah have a good one have a better one take care of yourselves and i will see you in the next one